Okay, what we're going to do now is use this FET simulation, which I'll link to below this video in case you want to play around with it. And we're going to just look at traveling waves for a little minute, sinusoidal ones. And then after we finished looking at it, we'll discuss what we already know and use this to derive an equation to describe that wave. Okay, so let's start this going. So you can see this is a string here. This end, there is no end here. This window shows that it's going on for infinity. And this just allows us to ignore reflections for now. So in later topics, we will need to consider what happens with reflections. But now, if you look at the little green dots on the string, they're actually moving up and down with simple harmonic motion. So the particles making up the medium here are vibrating in simple harmonic motion. Okay, let's stop at playing now and discuss what we already know. So what we're going to do now is derive an equation to describe the wave. So let's think about what we would expect for this wave equation. Well, first of all, we'd expect the same relationship as we derived previously for vt and x. So that if it's traveling to the right, then x becomes x minus vt. Now, we'd also expect the wave to repeat itself after one wavelength. Now, we said that the general form for a wave was a sine function. So we're going to be taking this sine of some function of x minus vt. So this function, the f of x minus vt, is going to give some answer in radians. So we would expect that if x progressed by one wavelength, so in time that would be one period, then it's going to be an additional 2 pi on. So we would expect it to have the relationship f of x minus vt is equal to minus 2 pi plus f of x plus lambda minus vt. And so a simple general function that solves this equation is if we let f of x minus vt be 2 pi on lambda times x minus vt plus 5. So you can just substitute this into that equation on the last slide to prove that. And so remember this f is in radians and so it's going to go into our sine function. So what we're doing now is just putting this into our sine function. So we would expect to have the amplitude outside of the sine fa function because that is the maximum displacement we can be from equilibrium. And so our wave equation is going to have the form y of x and t is equal to the amplitude times sine of 2 pi on lambda x minus vt plus phi. So the phi is just there to make this very general so that we can match any starting conditions. Okay, now some things to note. If the wave is traveling to the left, so that's in the negative direction, then we need to replace the x minus vt with x plus vt. So this is the equation for the wave traveling to the left. Now, we've already learned a bit about this equation, but we know that in each period, the wave travels one wavelength. So the velocity of the wave is given by the wavelength divided by the period, and the inverse of the period is the frequency. So we've got v is equal to f lambda, which we'll now be making use of to replace the v in our wave equation here with f lambda to simplify it down a little bit. So replacing that v with f lambda, we've now got a sine and then 2 pi on lambda, which is hopefully familiar to you. That's called the wave number. So now you know why that wave number is important, why, why we would use a wave number. And so this equation is 2 pi on lambda x minus 2 pi ft plus 5. And 2 pi f is actually called the angular frequency. So when we come across circular motion, you're going to see that again. This is going to um, continue to be an important relationship. And so we can simplify this equation here using these two definitions here. 
we've now got y is equal to a sine kx minus omega t plus 5.